investigación. After several investigations, it was possible to identify a series of fundings provenientes del lavado de activos. Coming from the laundering of assets of international organizations and foreign companies such as ExxonMobil. Well, U.S. Republican senators have blocked a bill aimed at providing billions of dollars of military aid to Ukraine and Israel. This is on full alert. Are you prepared to go to war over this? Well, let, let me put it this way. We want this region to remain a region of peace and stability. That is our uh, foremost concern. That is our priority. We want to ensure that, that we do all that we can to ensure that this region remains a region of peace and stability. That is why we are advising Venezuela not to act recklessly and in advance. Greetings. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to get into a few topics that are connected with the Guyana versus Venezuela border dispute. The first topic that we're going to get into is President Maduro's government claims that ExxonMobil with the help of Trump, sabotage their referendum. This has its Mantella, a criminal network financed by the U.S. Transition, uh, transnational company ExxonMobil, which decided to sabotage the consultative referendum of December 3rd. On a Wednesday, in statements to the press, the Attorney General of the Republic of Venezuela, Tarek Williams, Saab, points out that these uh, financing the word of honor through crypto assets uh, by the U.S. Uh, citizen Damien Merlo, a former telecommunications businessman and former foreign policy advisor linked to former President Donald Trump and advisor to the President of El Salvador, Nayib Bukele. Saab said that uh, as a part of an investigation into the international conspiracy against Venezuela, it has uh, been uh, determined that both Venezuela and foreign citizens are involved in these actions. Luego de varias diligencias de investigación, after several investigations, it was possible to identify a series of fundings provenientes del lavado de activos coming from the laundering of assets of international organizations and foreign companies such as ExxonMobil. Para conspirar, obviamente, como ya lo dije en el preámbulo, which obviously conspired, as I said in the introduction, against the development of the consultative referendum for the Guyana Esequiba. This was felt and clearly seen when the people took to the streets in large numbers to vote yes to the five questions. Obviously dealing a severe blow to those who led this deplorable campaign, among other people. The Attorney General said that the criminal network was financed by U.S. transnational company ExxonMobil with the use of crypto assets. Yo quiero destacar que dicho I want to highlight that behind this crypto assets funding is Damian Merlo. Remember this name, Damian Merlo. Está detrás de ello, Damian Merlo. Capten este nombre. A U.S. citizen, former telecommunications Damian entrepreneur. Merlo and former foreign policy advisor linked to Donald Trump, and unsurprisingly, advisor also to Navid Bukele. Who used as a contact a man named Savoy Handon Wright, also from the US, who is already under arrest. And who used cryptocurrencies and large amount of cash to evade financial controls and to cover the origin and destination of the funds used in the conspiracy. William Saab also revealed that a U.S. citizen who kept economic relations with leaders of the Sumer organization. I want to point out that this U.S. citizen maintained economic relations with Claudia Macero. Claudia Macero. Pedro. Urruchurto y Roberto Abdul, líderes de la organización Pedro Urruchurto Sumate, and Roberto Abdul, all leaders of the organization Sumate. No one should be surprised by that. Históricamente subsidiada con fondos oscuros, con fondos totalmente opacos. An organization historically subsidized with dark funds, with totally... So what do you guys think about President Maduro's government's claims? Republican senators have blocked a bill aimed at providing billions of dollars of military aid to Ukraine and Israel. 
They insist that any aid to Ukraine must be tied to stronger policies to control immigration across the border with Mexico. The result of the vote will send lawmakers back to the negotiating table. President Joe Biden has signalled he's prepared to make compromises to get the aid approved. DW's Benjamin Alvarez Gruber has been following developments in Washington, D.C. So there were not enough votes in the Senate to pass this bill, the supplemental bill that President uh, Biden was just mentioning. What is important here that is not just financial help for Ukraine, but also for Israel, also for border security and also for Taiwan in the Indo-Pacific. And the problem here is that Republicans have repeatedly stressed that national security concerns need to start with uh, the U.S.'s uh, border security. They said that more needs to be done there. So it's a really big package, 106 billion US dollars. And uh, a few days ago, the White House said and urged Congress to approve uh, this package by saying, also by stating that the Department of Defense has used 97% of its funds for Ukraine and the State Department has used all the funds that it has. That's something that John Kirby, the spokesperson of the National Security um, Council also said earlier today, saying that this will be a Christmas gift for Russian uh, President Vladimir Putin if it does not get past Congress Republic. Guys, this is some troubling news coming out of the US. What do you guys think? No more help for any other countries? The US is trying to protect their borders first? And then, then maybe they could help other countries. But no more help for Ukraine, no more help for Israel, no more help for other countries and Guyana will be one of them. So why is President Ali speaking about that he has the full support of the US and the US just downed a bill? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. What is next for Guyana? Where is the help coming from? Well, joining us now on Al Jazeera, live from Georgetown, the capital of Guyana, is President Irfan Ali. Mr. President, thank you very much for talking to Al Jazeera. Can I ask you first your reaction to Venezuelan voters approving a referendum claiming rights over Essequibo? Well, first of all, as we said before, uh, Venezuela has the right to do, uh, do whatever referendum they want to do. However, as we went to the uh, ICJ, we, we went to the ICJ specifically to seek orders against a referendum that seek to annex Essequibo, uh, which is part of Guyana, and against the questions that were in that referendum. That, the questions in the referendum sought to give Venezuela the authority to act in annexing the Essequibo, setting up administrative mechanism, issuing ID cards, and the ICJ <coughs> ruled overwhelmingly, uh, the, uh, and unanimously, the ICJ ruled unanimously that Venezuela must not act on the outcome of this referendum. The rule that status quo must remain, that is, executable remains uh, within the territory of Guyana, right. and that Guyana continues to administer governance in executable. The ICJ was very, very clear in its order. Notwithstanding right. this order, after the referendum, on Sunday, last evening, President Maduro moved to announce a series of measures that point to the annexation of Essequibo, establishment of an administrative mechanism to govern uh, Essequibo, and to give ultimatum to companies operating within Essequibo uh, to, to remove themselves within three months. This is a blatant disregard for international order, the order of the ICJ, and international law and definitely not in keeping uh, with being a member of the United Nations fam United Nations family right. of nations. Right. Now, I as a result, to, I to... can I ask you, Mr. President, as a result of these measures that you just outlined that uh, Venezuela took, I understand that your country, Guyana, has put its defense forces on full alert. Are you prepared to go to war over this? Well, let, let me put it this way. We want this region to remain a region of peace and stability. That is our uh, foremost concern. That is our priority. We want to ensure that, that we do all that we can to ensure that this region remains a region of peace and stability. That is why 
We are advising Venezuela not to act recklessly and in an adventurous manner. If you so want this to do? remain a region of peace, as you say, why have you put your forces on alert? So why, why should we, we be in a position to defend what is ours? We went to the, we went to the, ICE, the United Nations Security Council this morning and uh, to, to alert the Secur Security Council. We have called upon all our regional partners. CARICOM, Commonwealth and the OAS have all issued very strong statements. We are working with our allies in a precautionary manner, in a precautionary manner, to ensure that we keep our people safe and ensure the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Guyana. Have you requested military assistance, what what Mr. President, advancing? from your allies in the region? Have you requested military assistance from, from your regional allies, including the US or Cuba? We have tremendous uh, defense cooperation uh, with the United States Department of Defense. We have, uh, we hosted the trade winds exercise up, up to this year. So there is an elaborate uh, defense cooperation with the United States that is ongoing. And uh, we have brought this uh, SOUTHCOM, we have brought the Department of Defense, we have brought Brazil, CARICOM, Commonwealth, the OS. We have brought all of them in the loop as to what Venezuela is doing, the way they're tramping upon international law, the reckless behavior of President Maduro. But importantly, I want to correct a statement earlier. The, the borders between Guyana and Venezuela was settled in 1899 with the full participation of Venezuela and British Guyana. Both of them signed off on the border. Venezuela then enacted in their local laws the borders as established in 1899. The borders were then, stamps were then produced. Venezuela, <clears throat> when we were going to independence, then raised a controversy. The Geneva Agreement provided that if the two parties did not resolve the controversy, then the United Nations Secretary General would determine where the controversy uh, will be resolved. Right. The UNSG has determined that the controversy be resolved in the ICJ. The question is, why, why is Venezuela afraid to face the ICJ? They've already participated in the process before the ICJ by, uh, by going to argue that the court does not have jurisdiction twice. Mm -hmm. They lost that case. They participated when we went for provisional measures by no less a person than the vice president. So they have, it's double standard. Okay. They've participated in it because they don't have their way. They're now saying that they're not going to respect the outcome of the court. Why do you think President Maduro has done this now? Why? I didn't get that question. Why do you think President Maduro has, has done, has gone ahead and done this now, this move? Well, there are many school of thoughts. One, 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 uh, one school of thought is that he is trying to distract from the current political situation in Venezuela. Guyana has welcomed many Venezuelan migrants to our shores. We are providing support for them. We have welcomed them with love. We'll continue to show them love because that is who we are. We are a law-abiding country, a law-abiding people. We respect the rule of law. We respect peace and we understand that we have to coexist as neighbors. Okay. So there's one school of thought that he's doing this for his selfish political uh, reasons at home. He wants to create a distraction that he's not doing well in the polls. That is one opinion. The second opinion can be <clears throat> uh, one of greed. One of greed. Simply that. Okay. Can I ask you briefly, Mr. President, before we let you go, you've, as you said, asked the UN Security Council to consider intervening. What exactly would you like to, to see the Security Council do today? Well, first of all, we want this region to remain a region of peace and stability. We would like the United Nations Security Council to issue a very strong statement to Venezuela in relation to, the, to, to Venezuela breaching the order of the ICJ, an, an order that can be enforceable. And we would like to see the full commitment of the United Nations Security Council to ensure that they do everything to, 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 to have this region remains a region of peace and stability and for them to support uh, international law, for them to call upon Venezuela okay. to support and respect uh, international law and have the controversy settled where it is. That is before the ICJ. Mr. President, thank you very much for talking to Al Jazeera. Irfan Ali, President Thanks. of... What do you guys think about President Ali's warning to Venezuela? Will Venezuela finally comply? What do you guys think about the conflict going on between Guyana and Venezuela? Let us know in the comments below. Please do remember to like and subscribe.
We'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.